Hey guys, welcome back to another Semi Live. This week looks a little different. We're up on uh, Lake Winnebago here, back by my hometown in Fox Valley area. And uh, as you can see, this, uh, this week's gonna entail something that uh, we only do a couple weeks out of the year, but that is uh, sturgeon spearing. So this week's Semi Live, we're gonna kind of run you through how we prepare for the week. Um, opening day is this coming Saturday. It is uh, Tuesday today. So kind of got the shack already the last couple days. We are now down on the lake, uh, kind of close to where I actually spear. So just kind of want to run you through um, kind of all the different things about spearing, how we go about scouting, and all the preparation that goes into um, that opening weekend that we're excited for this weekend. So first off, I'm just going to kind of walk you around the shack. Uh, my shack is uh, eight, eight feet long by seven feet wide. Um, it's a uh, tip down shack, which means that we literally tip this down, it goes on the car, it's on wheels, and I can pull it wherever I want. Um, that is one of the styles. Another style is some guys will put these right on um, skis, and uh, that literally you gotta load on a trailer because obviously you can't pull it down the road, so a lot of people that have that style shack either live on the lake or they store them real close where they can pull it down like a snowy or icy road. Um, and then the last style that they just started coming out with the last couple years is the drop down style, which is pretty much a, a big trailer or camper, kind of like your ice castles that are literally on wheels and you crank them down and they sit right on the ground, which is really nice too, because you can pull them down the road and uh, pretty much use them all year round, um, where these are specifically for sturgeon uh, spearing and I don't pull mine out unless I'm doing that. So as you can see, you can just kind of walk around they have a weird shape to them. They're kind of slanted on the front. Um, only reason being is this is my hole side. So that way the wall kind of goes out and gives you more uh, area to look down the hole. Um, a lot of guys will put handles down on the bottoms and that's just um, for one reason, picking it up. It's a lot easier when you have a couple of guys to help you at the end of spearing. You tip it back up, get it on your car. Um, just kind of a nice little thing to have. Um, we'll bring it around here. This is where you can actually kind of see the frame style that I go with, with your tip down shacks. So when it's sitting on the ice and you're spearing, the hitch is up in the air um, and it sits flat on the ground. But as soon as you want to put it on your car and, and remove it from the ice, a couple guys, you can lift this and drop it right down on your hitch and, and you're good to go within um, five minutes. So um, over here you can see I have a set of pipes um, these actually go right on the bottom of the lake and all it pretty much does is help you uh, see the bottom a lot better and uh, if a fish crosses it obviously you can see the difference in color but what I do is I spread them out in an X pattern and it just covers more uh, area on the bottom obviously and then I have another set of uh, just white pieces of wood that I put weights on also put that in an X pattern so now I got two X's down there you can really see a good amount of uh, water. So now we will uh, bring you inside the shack and I'll kind of show you my setup on what I run inside the shack. All right, so we just got in the shack, so we're gonna kind of run you through um, my setup and every, every setup's different, I'll tell you that right from the get-go. Every guy runs his shack completely opposite. I think we have 12 guys in our group and not one of us run the same kind of setup. Um, so obviously they're going to be different, but I'll run you through what I kind of do. First off, inside here, it's seven feet wide. So my flooring or my decking that we stand on is four feet. And then I just have a three foot wide um, hole, but it's seven feet across. Um, it's one of the smaller holes. You can run them bigger. A lot of my buddies run them bigger. It's just kind of the shack setup that I bought and I haven't changed it. Um, still works. You still see fish out of it. Um, but that's kind of my setup as far as the flooring and the hole goes. Um, over here on my left side, you can see I just have a really basic um, shelving system, but I do have a little battery compartment, a Vexlar battery goes up in there, and that's what I run my CB radio off of, which hooks in right here. Only reason for a CB radio is we all have them in our group, and it's a good way to communicate in the days that you're out here by yourself. Um, you can, if you get a fish on, you can call your buddy and say, hey, I need some help. They can run over and help you. Um, and obviously, if you're drinking, it's fun to talk on there and, and bullshit a little bit with the guys. 
Um, obviously, we just have some little coat hangers in here. Um, we usually obviously run a heater in here, so it's warm in here. I mean, you're talking 70, 75 degrees. So you can hang your jacket up, or uh, sometimes we bring coolers, you can hang them in here. Usually I'll run a radio up here, um, not too loud, but really it's kind of preference. Um, I've been in shacks that have gotten fish that's been pretty rowdy. So that obviously brings us over here. This is a little different setup than a lot of guys have, but this is how I hang my spears. Um, I'll hang my spear right off of here. One hangs there, and then one hangs over on the other side, right over Brennan's uh, shoulder there. And then obviously the spears have ropes hooked to them. So my ropes will kind of loop up and through this angle um, iron here. And then they get tied into these eye bolts here. And then we are, we're good. And that, the only reason for the eye bolts obviously is when you throw the spear and you get a fish on, if they take all the line, they aren't going anywhere. They're hooked into the wall. Um, so obviously same setup on this side as there. Um, so I run two spears, which you can do. Um, you can run two spears even if you're in the shack by yourself in case you need a backup spear and you gotta throw again. Um, this is actually kind of unique. Not a lot of guys run them. Um, I don't actually run them, run it too often, but you can put a piece of wood in here. Um, a lot of guys take like a, a water noodle or whatever and wrap that and it sits across here and that's so when you can, when you're sitting in your seat, if your back gets sore or whatever, you can kind of lean over the hole and it's just kind of a, a comfortability thing. Um, but like I said, I don't run it a lot just because I like standing or sitting or getting up and walking around, but it's always an option to have. This you'll see right here, that's just so I can hook my CB radio right there so that way if I do get a fish on, it's easy to grab. I'm not back here trying to grab it while I got a fish on. So. That's pretty much it for the inside of the shack. Um, besides, obviously we want everything black in here. So this is actually just uh, the garden felt that you uh, can use for landscaping. And I just stapled it to the walls, all the insulation's tucked in there nice and it can't really go anywhere. Um, and I guess we can talk about the decoy setup too. So down here, so right here is where I actually run my decoys. Um, so there's two sets of strings here. One attaches to one decoy that I'll run um, usually down on the bottom or close to the bottom. And then I run another decoy on the other side about halfway up the water column. And again, it's a total preference thing. Guys only run one decoy, some guys run two. Um, some guys put them low, some guys put them high. And it's and sturgeon are curious. So it's, it's pretty much whatever you feel and whatever you're feeling lucky is gonna do it. That's what we go with. Um, and so I'll actually show you just a couple of my decoys quick that I use to say that one works more than the other and sees more fish. Couldn't tell you that. Um, and I think every sturgeon spear would say that same thing. It's just a luck factor. I mean, a lot of this has to do with luck, but I will uh, run and grab you what I'm gonna probably use this year and just kind of swap through them. And uh, so you can see what I kind of use for decoys. All right, so now we're outside the shack. Just wanna run you through kind of the different decoys that I run. Again, this is a huge topic that everyone has. Everyone runs different decoys. Um, I, same thing out of 12 guys in a group, I think everyone runs something else and everyone usually sees fish um, depending on the year. So first off, this is your normal style decoy that you're gonna see a lot. Um, there's a lot of people around the lake that you know carve these out of wood um, and really take a liking to it. And there's tons of different varieties in them. I think I actually won this at a bar and that's the reason I use it. <laughs> um, so, but that's pretty much that. Then obviously a big one, um, you see a lot of videos on YouTube, fish coming into literally just a coffee mug, a white coffee mug. Sounds stupid, but a lot of times it works. And then the last thing that our group actually has found um, some success in over the years is lampshades. Sounds really dumb, super easy to find. Um, this one I literally took off one of my lamps at home so super easy, super cheap. It's not like you gotta go and spend a bunch of money. This style decoy, there are a lot of money that goes into these. Um, they range in size um, and a lot of guys will drop good money on that style, but literally you can do this sport for very cheap um, and literally buy lampshades, coffee mugs. Um, some guys I know use deer antlers, things like that. Um, pretty much anything will bring a sturgeon in. They're curious. They see something in the water column, they come to check it out. That's when you spear them. So 
that's pretty much going to wrap up this this part of it so we are going to drop this down uh, back on the jeep and we're actually going to head out on the lake and kind of run you guys through what we do um, once we get out there and kind of scout a little bit and uh, check water depth clarity things like that here as we move closer into opening weekend all right well we just got out to our spot or where we usually spear previous years you can see over my shoulder my buddy todd's drilling a hole right now usually what we do is uh we'll come out to our spot that we were on last year check the water depth and uh, see if it's somewhat the same and then uh, from there usually if we if we find where we want to be then we'll start checking clarity see what the clarity is like we've been here in 11 to 12 feet up here on this this end of the lake which is good because um, we're usually sitting in about 10 11 feet of water so we should be able to see bottom really well that way but we're going to drill a couple holes here um, kind of run you through what we do he's got his vexilar i think along we'll check the depth and then uh, start checking clarity along here and see where we want to end up dropping my shack for the year So right now, as you can see, Todd's gonna drop a coffee mug down there that he's got split in half. Just another way of checking depth, even though the Markham tells us what we got. It's another way of checking depth, plus we can see if we can see bottom well. So that's what he's doing right now. He's gonna see if he can see that white cup on the bottom. Yeah, he can see it pretty well, which is good. So now we're gonna probably just bounce around and try and find some diff different depths, and then uh, kind of decide where we're gonna drop our shacks. A little cloudier. So you just use the coffee mug down there, check clarity again, and just in, we've only gone probably 150, 200 yards, if that, and the clarity is just a little different. He said it's a little cloudier here than over there. But then also while he's down there on that bottom with that coffee mug, he's bouncing around on the bottom just to see what kind of stuff we're dealing with on the bottom, whether it's gravel, rock, mud. Um, a lot of these fish, they feed in the mud flats on those red worms usually, but a lot of times they'll come up on them bars or those reefs where there's rocky, rocky formations and feed on zebra mussels and things like that. So we kind of just try and find a mix of everything that usually will put us in somewhat the right spot. But as you can see, Brennan will pan out here. Even on Tuesday right now, there's already starting to be some shacks put out. But by Saturday, this place will be loaded with shacks and, and people are out here doing kind of the same thing, just trying to find their spots from previous years or moving. If they didn't do well last year, trying to find just different variations and, and see what works. So we're probably gonna drop my shack here somewhere right in this vicinity and and then Todd's gonna bring his out on Thursday and uh, the rest of the guys he's actually gonna cut in Thursday but then I'll be out Friday to cut in so we'll uh, kind of run you through of what we do once we drop the shack down get it in the right spot we'll probably bank it up just a touch but not really too much because we're gonna have to recut in on Friday so what do you think there boss man it's a goal. <laughs> well we finally decided on a spot We've speared in here for years, just all over in different spots, but it kind of seems like they come through this one area more than the other areas. So um, we're gonna drop the shack. I'll kind of run you through how we face the shacks, um, depending on sunrise and stuff like that, get more light in the hole. And then uh, that's probably gonna pretty much wrap up our day out here as far as getting ready for the season. Then I'll be back out here in a few days on Friday to cut in and uh, obviously that'll all be showing on next week's Semi Live. Uh, hopefully we can bring you a fish then. So we're gonna jump out, drop the shack, and then uh, we'll wrap her up. Yeah. Woo, slipping. So one thing that we do, I was gonna touch on is, you can see a lot of these shacks are facing the same way mine's facing east right now that way sunrises in the morning 
the earlier you can get light down your hole, the better. Um, Spearing usually runs from seven in the morning till one. So right at seven, it's still pretty dark down in the water column. So we try and face our holes always to the east. That sun comes up, you get light around your shack. When we cut in, you'll notice on Friday, we'll shovel all the snow that we can and bank the shacks up. That way no wind's getting under, blowing air pockets on the water so it's all smooth. Also, it just keeps your shack warmer. And then obviously, once you take all the snow off from around the shack, allows more light through the ice. You can see better down there. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's Semi Live. Um, we're gonna be obviously rolling out the next couple weeks sturgeon spearing um, as we're doing it. So hopefully between me and the East Siders, we can get one um, on the ice for you guys. But make sure to tune in next week. That'll be all the footage from opening weekend and part of next week. And then the following week, we're gonna keep it rolling with the second weekend of spearing. So we're trying to bring you new stuff this year with the Semi Live series. We're gonna keep rolling stuff out each week. And uh, after spearing, it's gonna roll right into shed season. So. Thanks for tuning in to this week's Semi Live, and we'll catch you back here on the ice for opener this weekend.